evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the Monday evening, November 26th uh, edition of the Quincy City Council. We, uh, on behalf of the body, hope that everybody enjoyed their, uh, you know, and had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, at this point, Madam Clerk, if you please could um, start by calling the roll of the members. Councilor Kane. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Councilor Hughes. Councilor Liang. Present. Councilor Mahoney. Present. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Palmucci. Present. President Kroll. Present. Seven members. Seven members. We have a quorum. And could you please read into the record the open meeting law? Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged impermissible. At this time, I would like to uh, ask everybody to stand and join me in a moment of silence, keeping in our thoughts and prayers those men and women who so courageously defend our country. At this point, uh, I would like to call to the microphone, to the podium, uh, past National Commander and uh, Ward 2 resident Jake Comer to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jake. Madam Clerk, the first item on the agenda. Tonight we're honoring the Girl Scouts of Quincy. Okay, at this point I would like to um, invite to the podium Donna Yang from the Girl Scouts, who's going to um, basically give us an overview of uh, the bronze award that we're going to be recognizing some of the ladies here this evening. Ms. Yang, welcome. We're happy you're here. Thank you, Donna. Just before we begin, I want to say you know, congratulations to all you um, um, young ladies. Uh, thank you for your, your commitment to the city, the dedication you've shown with all these projects, and the leadership you've shown, you know? Um, really, putting in the effort, the planning, and the follow-through. I get... Good? Uh, I get good ideas all the time, and then I do nothing about them. <clears throat> they go right out of my head. You guys came up with good ideas and then you executed. That's the toughest part in life is following through and finishing a project. So kudos to you guys. We have some commendations on behalf of the entire city council that we'd like to, to present to each of you tonight. Uh, I have the distinct honor of being the one who gets to mispronounce all of your names. So I apologize in advance. Um, so first we're gonna start with uh, Troop 75294 and the B of uh, be the Change Project, and I'll just read a little description. So why don't the girls who did uh, the be, be the Change Project come up? <clears throat> you guys know who you are. There you go. Uh, so these young ladies, Mr. President, teamed up to research pertinent information, uh, plant pollinator gardens, and create videos to educate their peers on environmental changes, their effects on bees, and steps to help protect from these changes. So there's an environmental theme there, right? Are you guys in order? Did they put you in? Oh, I was going to say that would make it too, too easy. <laughs> What's your name? Isabel. Isabel. Uh, how do I pronounce that name? Okay, first person um, we'd like to congratulate is uh, Neem. 
Neem, come at, uh, who has these ones? You have these ones? We're all gonna do a, I don't have, I have nothing for you. I'll give you a high five. She's got the, she's got the hardware. Um, Celia, we'll, and we'll do a round of applause after each project, okay? It's like the Oscars. Uh, Celia, congratulations. Is it uh, Kara? Kara? Kira. Okay. Charlotte? Mia? And Maya? And Isabella? All right. One of, give me one of these here. So all of these, um, all of these accommodations, uh, say from the Quincy City Council, presented to each member of the troop <clears throat> in recognition of receiving the Girl Scouts of America um, bronze award for the particular project, uh, encouraging and, well, I guess they're all different, so. We'll, um, so let's give the group from Be The Change Project a round of applause. Congratulations, young ladies. All right, go have a seat. We're gonna come up and do a picture afterwards. Did you guys bring cookies to sell? Not, Not yet? yet? All right, well, you come back here. We'll, Councilor DeBona will buy 100 boxes from each one of you, he said. <clears throat> okay, next we'll be uh, recognizing the young women from Troop 68282, who were part of the uh, Butterfly Little Free Library, the Clifford Marshall Project. Come up, young ladies. Uh, you guys are like the bashful group, the shy group. What, is it only two of you? Oh, I can see why you're shy. All right, Drew, we have uh, Ella, Jenna, and Elizabeth. Jenna. Jenna's not here, okay. Who is this? Nina has these, so congratulations. Uh, this project, <coughs> Elizabeth, <clears throat> this project, um, the Butterfly Little Free Library at the Clifford Marshall, these uh, young ladies built a, a little free library at Clif Clifford Marshall Elementary School with the hope of inspiring and encouraging children to read by providing uh, expanded access to books. So, great job, great project. Thank you very much. Congratulations. That wasn't so bad. Okay, uh, next we're gonna invite up the young ladies again from Troop 68282 uh, who were part of the Little Free Library Snug Harbor Project. This is Gretchen, Kyrie, Alyssa, Catherine, Joyce, Elizabeth, and Tareen. Oh, good, because I probably mispronounced her name, so she didn't have to witness. Oh, I didn't? All right. Kudos for me. Okay. Um, so this project, these young ladies uh, formed a, a, a free library at the Snug Harbor Elementary School, again, with the goal of inspiring the love of reading and building the community and increasing access to books. So congratulations, young ladies. Thank you for this project. <clears throat> so we have Gretchen, Kyrie, Alyssa, Catherine, Joyce, Elizabeth, and Tareen. Congratulations on the bronze award. Very nicely done. <clears throat> okay, and um, one, two. Next we have, again, from Troop 68282, uh, the Bronze Award recipients for the Project Butterfly Garden at the Wollaston School Project. It's Madeline, Angelina, Maggie, Hannah, Victoria, Violet, and Zoe. Come on up. I like the name Violet especially. Nice, high five. Awesome name. Your names are okay too, but you know. Um, <clears throat> these young... Women created a butterfly garden at the Wollaston Elementary School to support and stop the declining butterfly population by educating themselves on the use of pesticides in the ecosystem. Pesticides, bad, right? That was the gist. Pesticides, no bueno. Well, congratulations, ladies, uh, on receiving the, the bronze award for your project. So Nina, I think it's your turn. You were gonna do the um, Silver Award recipients here. Before we do, Counselor, I'd like to uh, invite Lindsay Currency 
just to provide the uh, the chamber as well as the at home viewer sort of an overarching view of what the silver is. So, Lindsay, great. All right. So the Silver Award is the second highest award a girl can earn in scouting and represents a girl's accomplishments in scouting and in her community as she grows and works to improve her life and the lives of others. Just like the Bronze Award, cadets must first complete a cadet journey and create a take action project that improves their neighborhood or local community. After girls complete the cadet journey, the suggested minimum time for earning their Girl Scout Silver Award is 50 hours for an individual girl or each girl on a small team. Girls earn the award by focusing on an issue they care about, building a team, exploring their community, picking, planning, and putting their take action into project, in, into action, sorry. Demonstrating an understanding of st sustainability in the wider world and sharing what they have learned with others. Thank you, Lindsay. Councilor Yang. All right. So the silver award recipients that we're going to recognize first will be from Troop 85383 for the Summer Dance Project. Brianna Joyce, you want to come up? She's not here. Okay. Well, we'll still recognize her and we'll describe her project. We'll make sure she gets that. Um, she had better stuff to do, like uh, Councillor Hughes and Councillor Kane did. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. They both had prior commitments. Very reasonable lots. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. All right. This is why I don't have an open mic. Yeah, right. <laughs> summer Jan the Summer Dance Project that Brianna participated in and organized. Um, she organized and pro provided free dance workshops at the library for underprivileged under children to allow them the chance to enjoy dance lessons they couldn't otherwise afford. That's a, that's a tremendous project. 50 hours she put into that. Well, well that's wonderful. Um, okay, so the next uh, Silver Award recipient, uh, recipients that we're going to recognize from Troop 85042, Isabella, Jada, and Angel for the Clifford Nature Trail Project. Why don't you ladies come on up? Yeah. Councilor Mahoney will hand out your accommodations. Uh, now, these uh, three young ladies uh, are all from uh, former Clifford Marshall Elementary School students, and they worked with school faculty to transform the woods next to the school by cleaning up the overgrowth and creating a usable trail, as well as creating great appropriate worksheets for teachers to use when bringing their students through the trail. So we congratulate you on completion of that project and <laughs> Silver Award. Any poison ivy back there? You have any problems? Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. Uh, the next uh, silver award recipients from Troop 75054, Nora. Um, help on the next name here. Ms. Curran and Ava Hunt. How do you pronounce it? Maraid. Okay. And you're the only one here, the one, the one name I couldn't pronounce. Yay me. All right. Uh, and uh, what Maraid... Um, the project Maraid participated in uh, and completed was uh, that she provided free ballet, tap, and hip hop lessons in an effort to celebrate, encourage, and educate others on the importance of physical activity through dance. Congratulations. Yeah, it's a great project. And the next Silver Award recipients from Troop 75054, Catherine, Kaylee, and Jarrell. Jarrell? Yeah? All right. Look at me. And these um, young women were awarded the Silver Award uh, for their project, the Germantown Yacht Club Project, <coughs> excuse me, in which they created a website, a slideshow, and a poster board for display at the Quincy Historical Society to preserve the history of the Germantown Yacht Club. Congratulations, ladies. Good job. <coughs> The uh, final silver award recipient, Sabrina Egan from Troop 85042. Um, she completed the uh, What's Going On in Your Own Backyard project, which extensively researched animals, how they live and are affected by deforestation and pollution. She conducted library presentations, created coloring pages and crafts to educate children on the issue. Congratulations. I'm catching a drift here. Are you going to come up and tell us what the gold award is? or Is that a thing? No? We're just going to roll with it. Okay, so the... Oh, no, no, the no. no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gold is 
you. my baby. Hello, Gail. So um, Amy Chilcott earned the Gold Award this year, and I say earned, uh, it was identifying an issue in the community, and then she has to propose it. She has to get feedback, which a lot of the girls and some adults have a hard time hearing that their project is to go to work. Um, and then she ran financial workshops at Quincy High, and Quincy High was pretty happy, so now they've integrated it into, I think it's one or two courses, um, so the students will learn about what is a credit card, what is a debit card, That's and really... other, uh, the children had a lot of questions. She brought in AAA, who also talked about financing your college future. So I'm really proud of Amy. She's at Endicott College right now, so she can't be here. It was 80 hours that she it's did. And it's always more than 80 hours for the project. So I'll be happy to give that to Amy. <laughs> She's from my group. Thank you, Gail. So on behalf of all the city councilors, we want to congratulate you all. Thank you again for your dedication to the, to the community and for your um, commitment to finishing those projects. It took a lot of time. It's not an easy thing to do, and you deserve all of our uh, all of our applause. So, thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Um, and with that, Madam Clerk, next item on the agenda, please. The honoring of Fred White, 2018-2019 American Legion State Commander. Chair recognizes the chairman of the City Council's Veterans Committee, Councilor at Large, Noel DeBona. Say that quick five times. Councilor, good evening. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, thank you, thank you all the Girl Scouts for coming out tonight. Such a, such a lively room in here, thank you. Um, just, just before we get into um, Fred White, you know our 2018-2019 State Commander, American Legion Department of Massachusetts. I just want to recognize a couple of, of um, people that are in attendance tonight. Um, our past national commander, Jake Comer, is here tonight. Thank you for coming out. Come on up. <laughs> City of Quincy Veteran Services Director, past uh, Veterans Council of Quincy, and past Marset. Um, Post 294 Commander George Nicholson. Come on up, George. <laughs> Past Quincy Veterans Council and Morissette Post 294 Commanders Richard Keene, Robert LaForest, LaFour, and Robert Lewis. Can all three of you come up, please? Marisette Post 294 Commanders, Ralph Ames and William Cochran. Can you come on up, please? Tom Ames. Is that? Tom, Tom. I'm sorry. I'm looking at him, Tom Ames. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, least um, American um, Legion, Marisette Post 294 member, and Sons of the American Legion member as well, Guy Ferris. Guy? You know, I, I keep in very good contact with all the members that are up here tonight. Um, you know, um, past National Commander Jake Comer, um, every few months I'll get a call from him talking about different things and, and what the city's doing. Uh, I just want to thank you for, for letting me know about Fred White and um, the state commander that had a nice dinner um, a couple weeks ago um, in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Um, uh, you know, I first met Fred um, in 2012, um, coming into the post, the Morissette Post 294. Um, and right on the spot, my brother-in-law was a past um, commander of, of, of the post as well. And, and he, on the spot, um, with the group of you, made me sign up as a Suns. Um, in 2012, you, you, put, you put the thing on the thing and said, okay, you're going to sign right now. And you're, do you have a check for $25? And I said, sure do. And I became a member. And um, Fred, was, Fred was right, next to, right, right there, um, you know, helping veterans, helping others. You know, these, these fine um, men here, have done a lot for other veterans, and they try to continue to do that in the community today, here in the city of Quincy, throughout the state of Massachusetts, as well as um, in, around the world. Um, and I know Jake has, has been around for, for a long time. So 
Um, I'm going to read this, Fred, and you can come on up and say a few words. Um, Fred White, 2018-2019 State Commander, the American Legion Department of Massachusetts, in recognition of your tenure as 2018-2019 State Commander of the American Legion Department of Massachusetts, your commitment and dedication to serving the citizens of the United States, Massachusetts, and the city of Quincy as the former commander of the Marset Post 294 are truly admired. We thank you for your service and congratulate you on such an honorable achievement and wish you continued success as you serve your term. This is signed by the city council and the whole group that's up here tonight. Thank you, Fred, and come on up. Council President uh, Brad Kroll, Councilors, no, past National Commander John Jake Comer. Uh, it's a privilege to be up here, and I thank you all for uh, recognizing uh, what, not particularly what I do, but particularly what the American Legion does. The, Amer the American Legion largest wartime veterans organization in the world does a lot for the good of the country, nation. And I thank you all, as I've said before, I say it again, it is a pleasure to be here and an honor, and I thank you for recognizing my service to this country, thank you. <laughs> we could just take a quick recess and uh, if we could take a little picture up front if we could. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clerk. That does conclude this evening's agenda. Okay. With that, the approval of previous meeting minutes. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, communications and reports from the mayor and other city officers and city boards. Madam Clerk. Uh, I do have um, two traffics um, that to put in tonight to ordinance and advertising in Ward 6 at a stop sign on Sharon Road eastbound intersection intersecting with Milton Road and at a stop sign on Colby Road east and westbound intersecting with Sharon Road. Both will be referred to ordinance committee. With that, any unfinished business in preceding meetings? Seeing none, reports of committees. Seeing none. Uh, presentations of petitions, memorials, and remonstrance. Councillor <clears throat> Palmucci. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's with a heavy heart that I have um, two memorials that I would like to um, submit to the council tonight. and. Um, uh, to uh, Quincy folks who, who passed away in the past couple of days, actually. Uh, the first was uh, Cindy Manning, who many of us, if not all of us, knew um, very well. Um, Cindy uh, passed on Saturday um, peacefully at home. She was surrounded by her, her family. Uh, she was uh, a little bit about Cindy. Um, I don't think of what's appropriate to say and not appropriate to say about <laughs> Cindy, but um, uh, Cindy was, uh, she was born in Boston, raised and educated in, in South Boston, was a graduate of South Boston High School. Uh, she lived in Quincy for over 40 years. Uh, she worked for the city for over 30 years, working in the, um, most recently in the city clerk's office as the licensing board secretary for the past 22 years. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, she had just retired uh, from the city when she became, uh, not too long after she became ill, and um, didn't quite get to enjoy her retirement as I, I think her, her family, her husband, Jean, um, and everyone else uh, expected. She leaves behind um, 
a family that will miss her tremendously, including our uh, very own clerk of committees, Jen Manning, who I know is very close with her mom. Uh, and, and I just ask that, that the council and folks watching at home uh, keep Cindy Manning and, and her family in their thoughts and prayers uh, as, we, as we mourn her passing. And uh, unfortunately, another uh, memorial um, that I offer tonight <clears throat> for um, young uh, Lucian uh, T. Burge, who passed away last Friday. Uh, Luke was a, a senior at Quincy High School. He was a member of the National Honor Society. Uh, he was a good student. He was well respected by faculty, administration, uh, and, and, uh, and the students of both Bernazani and Central Middle Schools. Uh, he was a member of the Hyper Robotics team as well as the, the, the tennis team at Quincy High School. <coughs> Luke was also a, a dedicated and accomplished member of uh, Boy Scout Troop 42. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is how I came to know um, Luke uh, in uh, one of the, the, the biggest honors I get as a city councilor is on an annual basis, the um, Troop 42 invites me and, and a couple other counselors um, to speak about citizenship to the, to the um, young men uh, and who are working on their citizenship badge. And that's how I first got to know Luke, uh, you know, about 10 years ago. Kind of watched him grow up and turn out to be this, you know, incredible, just amazing young man, uh, 18 years old. Uh, he, he had earned, through the Boy Scouts, he had earned um, the prestigious rank of, of Eagle Scout, the National Outdoor Achievement, and the Venturing Ranger Award. Uh, he was somebody who, along with his dad, Ray, <clears throat> enjoyed nature and backpacking in the White Mountains. Uh, he and his father and, and his fellow scouts beside him were able to climb all 48 of the 4,000-foot mountains in the White Mountain National Forest. Uh, and I had some conversations with Luke and Ray about that, uh, because I can appreciate what an amazing feat that really is, having climbed one of them and then promptly given up the hope of ever climbing the other 47. Uh, I, I can appreciate just what a great example that is of, of Luke's character and the type of person um, that he was. Uh, he had a strong work ethic. He delivered newspapers, the Quincy Sun, for the past seven years. He also worked at Curry Hardware for about the, the last three years. Um, and when I, whenever I'd see him at Curry Hardware, he would always say, hello, Mr. Palmucci. And his, I think every adult has this, you know, you have this spectrum of your life. And the first time somebody calls you Mr., like your last name, that you feel like an old guy because it's somebody younger who like means it, not like a joke, or like you're in trouble, like, oh, Mr. Palmucci. And Luke was that person. Whenever I'd see him at Curry, he'd call me Mr. Palmucci, and I'd want to stop him. But I knew he was doing it as a sign of, of respect because that's the kind of kid he was. He was incredibly polite, incredibly thoughtful. Um, he had uh, just recently started an internship at Dive Technologies in, in Quincy that he was very excited about. Uh, his, unfortunately, his amazingly accomplished life at the age of 13 was tragically cut short uh, by an auto accident. And um, really, I just, it's, we can only imagine the pain uh, and the sorrow that his family must feel at this point in time, having lost their mom several years back uh, to illness. Um, I, I think it's important. I think we all can keep Ray, Luke's family that he leaves behind, Ray, his dad, Jonathan, his brother, and Cecilia, his sister, if we could keep them all in our, our thoughts and prayers. And I know Councilor Hughes couldn't be here tonight. Um, She's out of state, um, I think unexpectedly, but she had called me this morning because we, we both knew Luke and, and Ray and the family well, and um, she had called me and, and asked to make sure that I expressed her, her sympathies and her condolences. She's, she knew Luke very well as well, and um, it's really just, this is a tragic loss, not only for this family, which of course it is, but it really is for the entire community, for Quincy High School community and the community of Quincy because 
I have no doubt in my mind that Luke would have gone on to do amazing things with his life moving forward because he had done so many amazing things in the short time he was with us. In those 18 years, he had done so many amazing things and it really is a tragedy in his passing. So I ask that we, we, keep, uh, we keep that family in our thoughts and prayers tonight. Thank you, Council President Kroll. Thank you, uh, Council Palmucci. Council Harris. Thank you, uh, thank you, President Kroll. And also, uh, sadly, uh, Quincy lost Caitlin Moore. Uh, she died November 19th, 2018. This just passed a couple of weeks. After facing a lifetime of health issues, uh, she was the uh, beloved daughter of Stephen Moore and Mary Cooney Moore of Quincy. Uh, she was, cherished, was the cherished fiance of Stephen Harvey of Quincy, loving sister of Mary Moore Campbell and her husband Christopher of Quincy, and her twin sister Julia Williamson and her husband Robert uh, of Wyndham, New Hampshire. Caitlin uh, was a devoted aunt, affectionately known as Dee Dee, uh, of Joshua Moore, Jacob Campbell, McKenna Campbell, Declan Campbell, Emily Williamson, and Robert Williamson. Cherished granddaughter of Priscilla McIntyre, of Randolph, and the late Thomas and Mary Cooney and Joseph Moore. Also survived by many aunts, uncles, cousins, and dear friends. Caitlin graduated from North Quincy High School, a class of 2003. Before her stroke, she attended school to become an EMT and was looking forward to excelling in her career. Caitlin enjoyed painting and making those around her laugh. Her, her main passion in life was spending time with her family, especially her nieces and nephews, whom were the center of her life. Caitlin will be remembered for for a big heart and her strong and forgiven personality. She will be sadly missed by all those who had the pleasure of knowing her. Um, relatives and friends uh, are respect respectfully invited to attend um, a celebration of life, which will be held tomorrow uh, at Cohen Funeral Home at 785 um, Hancock Street uh, at 8.15 a.m. Uh, in the morning and will be followed by a funeral mass at Sacred Heart Church. In lieu of flowers, donations in memory of Caitlin may be made to the Boston Children's Hospital Heart Foundation, and that you can find at www.childrenhospital.org or www.cohane.com. And again, our hearts and prayers go out to the family, especially during this time of year. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council DeBona. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Um, we, you know, tonight we had we had veterans. We had Girl Scouts. We're talking about Boy Scouts. Um, we're talking about veterans. We're talking about people that served in the city of Quincy. Um, uh, regretfully, um, Leo P. Cotterelli Sr., age 90. Um, he was a lifelong uh, Quincy resident. Died unexpectedly on Saturday, November 17th of this year, 2018, at the VA hospital in West. Roxbury, surrounded by his loving family. Leo was born and raised in Quincy to the late Julio and Helen Frazier Cotterelli. He left Quincy High School at the age of 16 in 1944 to join the Merchant Marine Service during World War II. He served on three voyages to Europe and later his ship was diverted from a convoy to Russia to port in France in, in order to bring ammunition which was badly needed by US troops during the Battle of the Bulge in 1944 to 1945. He enlisted in the US Marine Corps in August of, two, of 1945 and participated in the occupation of China for 33 months, where he assisted with the surrender of Japanese forces. Leo was employed as a sales manager in the Quincy office for the W.C. Caniff and Sons Monument Company for over 20 years. He was still working at the time of his passing. It was not uncommon for Leo to provide personal financial assistance to families of veterans by discounting his commissions. Previously, Leo served as the director of sales at Blue Hill Cemetery in Braintree for 33 years. As a younger man, he, could, he enjoyed golf and played softball and baseball for many years. Leo's lifelong passion was in helping veterans. For over 60 years, he was an advocate for veterans and their families. 
He was past state commandant two times and life member of the Marine Corps League, four times past commandant of the William R. Caddy Marine Corps Detachment 124 in Quincy. He was a member of the first and sixth Marine Division Associations, the China, Burma, India Association, China Marine Association, the VFW Bryan Post 613, the Morissette Legion uh, Post 294, and the Quincy DAV. He was a driving force in 1961 and 1962 to have the name of Treasure Island on Walston Beach change to Private First Class William R. Caddy Memorial Park. Leo was well known for organizing the first William R. Caddy Golf Classic in 1990, which still continues to provide funds to help needy veterans. He was also responsible for negotiating a 99-year lease at $1 per year for the permanent home of the Caddy Detachment in North Quincy. During his career, Leo marched with veterans in various parades, including the Quincy's Christmas Parade, and he was looking down on us on, uh, the other day when we were doing that parade. He participated with the Tot Toys for Tots program and assisted veterans at Brockton VA Hospital. Former husband of the late Teresa Brown Cotterelli and per uh, Patricia uh, Scholar Cotterelli of Quincy. Devoted father of Peter Cotterelli and his wife Katrina of Dorchester, Dennis Cotterelli of Quincy, twins Michael Cotterelli and his wife Sam of Scottsdale, Arizona, and Mark Cotterelli of Dorchester, Scott DeMarco of Summersworth, New Hampshire, Regina Cameron of Weymouth, Leo Cotterelli Jr. and his wife Edith of Fitchburg, Christopher Cotterelli of Stoughton, Andrew Cotterelli of, and his wife Maureen of Carver, Joseph Cotterelli and his fiancee Ali Salmani of Quincy, and the late Gerard Cotterelli and the, and the late Pamela DeMarco. He also was a loving grandfather to 11 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. If you could keep the Cotterelli family in your thoughts and prayers tonight, um, um, he is a, a, what I call um, a legend of Quincy. And, and, and this is an unbelievable obituary to be reading to all the folks and, um, and, and the picture of him um, back in the day when he was serving. But, but thank you so much, Mr. President. Any other petitions, memorials, or remonstrance? Motions, motions, orders, and resolutions. Scheduling of committee meetings. All right, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I'm actually gonna um, recognize Council Liang, who's going to express some sentiment. Um, one of our colleagues went through a major life event. So I will uh, recognize Council Liang. Thank you. Um, this is actually in cahoots with Councilor Harris tonight. I, I, um, I appreciate the time and I appreciate, you know, being able to, to sort of uh, bring this back into, you know, some, some moments of happiness that, you know, do cross our lives. And uh, one of our colleagues um, had been, you know, going through a lot this year in his personal life and uh, very recently on National Adoption Day had finalized oh, me? his adoption. Yes. And, I you were talking um, about Ian. No. <laughs> um, you know, and again, this is sort of in cahoots with Council Harris, but we wanted to find a moment to sort of end tonight with something that's really exciting and really life-changing. And it's not just, you know, the work you two do to inspire all of us every day, but um, you know, obviously in your personal life, you do amazing work. And, you know, I know we all can't stand you most of the time, but we do also want to appreciate when you do something good. <laughs> but in all you. seriousness, congratulations. We're, we're really proud and really happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's easy. He's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Motion to adjourn. I was just going to say, and we'll <laughs> kind of turn it back over Listen, and entertain a motion to really, adjourn. You know, hit the wall when we start complimenting me at the end of the meeting. No, no. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. City Council meeting concludes at 820. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>